Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Was Betrayed and Was The Last Person of Saiyan Race Part 2. Before we start please go support Agarth and Reaper AC7 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this Issei is a male in this story. Chapter 8. A Bad Omen and Android 21. At the Haidu residence everything was very calm, everyone had dinner and talked a little about the fight that had just happened. Issei told Akeno everything and why he had changed so much, however, Issei was still intrigued about that power he had unleashed, they talked for about one hour, Issei having used a large amount of energy during his Super Saiyan transformation. Legendary, he felt very tired, so he decided to go to bed early, just before sleeping, he stayed lying down thinking about the questions he would ask Shin and his grandfather, but the most important thing was to find Android 21 too that she would help him build the artifact that would make it easier for him to find the Dragon Balls and thus be able to revive his partner and that he would be at his side so that they could fight together once again. At that, the door to the room opened, it was Akeno, Roswis and Sona, all willing to sleep with him, they undressed, threw themselves on him in bed, hugging him very tightly, the girls settled themselves on Issei, so that in a while everyone will fall asleep. The next day, Issei woke up very early, it was Sunday, and without making any noise so as not to wake up the girls he got ready, took the hermit seeds and teleported to the planet of the Supreme Kaiosama in order to find answers and notify Shin. So he could tell Goku to arrive with all those people he had promised him. Shin. Hello, young Issei. Kibito. Issei, how nice it is to see you. Issei. Hello Shin, hello Kibito. I'm very happy to see you. Kibito. What a fight you put up Issei, you left us very impressed. Shin. It seems like your training efforts are finally paying off, but let me ask you something, how are you feeling? Issei. I imagine you're asking because of that uncontrolled state I was in, right? I feel very good, but. You don't happen to know what happened to me. Shin. I think I might have an explanation for that. Very young Issei, the state you reached by letting yourself be carried away by anger, is the legendary Super Saiyan. Issei. Legendary Super Saiyan. Shin. I will explain. The legendary Super Saiyan is a very powerful transformation, even more than the Super Saiyan 3, it gives the user a large amount of unlimited power, establishing the limit of that power to where the user can control it, this power is granted in exchange for the loss of reason, letting oneself be carried away only by anger and rage. This transformation occurs when a Saiyan, after being transformed into a Super Saiyan, is affected by a great emotional void or by the rage caused for some moment lived. Based on what Kibito and I know, you have been the second of your race to reach it, the first was a young man named Broly, who was defeated by his father and Prince Vegeta a long time ago, but Broly managed to control his power, leaving anger and anger since he was manipulated by his father. I say. Do you mean that I can control that large amount of energy, combining that power into another transformation? Shin. It is most likely, but since it is something exclusive to your race, it would be better for you to talk about this issue with your grandfather, he will help you control that energy. Issei. Yes, by the way, he told me to come so that you could communicate with him, telling him that he came to this planet so he could train, in addition, he mentioned to me that he had to introduce me to certain people. Shin. I see, apparently Lord Goku has planned for you to reach that level. Issei. What do you mean by that level? Shin. I can't give you any more details, young Issei, the only thing I can tell you is that until you see his grandfather, you have to train a lot and prepare for what's coming. Issei. It's okay, Shin, in fact today I had planned to train in the time room. Shin. It seems perfect to me, and tell me, when do you plan to return here? This way I can tell his grandfather that he is in the other world. Issei. Well today I can't because of my training, tomorrow either because I have to see someone who will help me look for the Dragon Balls, and I don't know how long it will take me to find them, let's say it would be within three days, so I can search the spheres with patience. Shin. Well, then it will be in three days. Issei. Hey Shin, before I go I wanted to ask you something. Shin. Tell me, Issei. Issei. One of the guys he was fighting with, just before finishing him off, mentioned a name, a certain Demigra, he also said that he would finish off all of us. Shin. What? Demigrate. It can't be, he was annihilated a long time ago, you don't have to worry. When Shin finished speaking, the voice of an old man interrupted him. If you have to worry, boy. Shin and Kibito. Former Supreme Kaisama, Issei. Who is that old man? Kibito. Have a little more respect boy, that over there is the Supreme Kaisama from 15 generations ago. Shin approached Issei's ear to which he whispered. Shin. Despite being a deity, he is a very perverted old man. Issei just thought about what Shin said, thinking that he only had those kinds of thoughts before. Ancient Supreme Kaisama. 
Demigra is someone to fear, I will tell you, he is one of the ancient demon gods of the underworld, his power is so gigantic that it resembles that of a god of destruction, your Saiyan boy, having had a relationship with the hell, I guess you've heard of him. I say. To tell the truth, I never talked to any of the factions about him. Former Supreme Kaisama. Well in any case, Demigra is someone not to be trifled with. So boy, prepare yourself for what is coming, you must train a lot, so as not to be annihilated by one of the most powerful demon gods. Shin. The former Supreme Kaisama is right, Issei, don't neglect training, I will inform your grandfather about the situation. Issei. Thank you very much, all three of you, I will do my best to save the planet. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to return to Earth. See you Shin, Kabito and former Supreme Kaio. Issei teleported back to his house. Appearing in the room, in front of Roswis, Sona and Akeno, to which they asked him a little annoyed. Akeno. RR look, my cute Issei is back. Roswis. When we all woke up and we didn't see you, we thought, Sona. We can tell where you were Issei-kun. Issei just stared at them. Issei. I. Sona. Yes, you. Issei. You. Roswis. You what? Issei. I'm dying of hunger he said it smiling and with one hand behind his head. Upon saying this, the girls formed a drop of an I'm style sweat and a smile, due to Issei's reaction. The girls got ready to make the Saiyans food and their own, it was still very early, so none of them had had breakfast. Everyone prepared to eat, while well, Issei devoured, Okeno asked him about his voracious appetite. Okeno. Hey Issei-kun, why do Saiyans eat so much? Issei. Well, according to my grandfather, the Saiyans, being a warrior race, retired for a long time to conquer planets, which is why they had to eat a lot, so as not to run out of energy in battle. Okeno. Arara, so that's why. Looks like I'll have to cook for you a lot. Braswis. Don't worry Okeno, with magic everything is much simpler. Issei. By the way, Sona, the reason I wasn't there was because I visited the Supreme Kaisama to get answers about yesterday's battle. This demigra guy that Kao mentioned just before eliminating him, he is supposed to be a supposed god of the underworld, he mentioned that he has incredible power that resembles that of a god of destruction. Sona thoughtfully answered. I have heard about him, according to the stories of the underworld, he was a demon god who existed long before the ancient demon king, they say that his power was so great that he could destroy a planet with a single movement, they say that it was defeated, annihilated and sealed long ago. So no one expected him to return, surely in the underworld that is causing a lot of talk, but I imagine that the power you showed is being mentioned by everyone. They say. Well. The important thing now is that we are all fine, well, thank you all for the food, I will go with Den to train in the time room. Issei said goodbye to each one, they all gave him a kiss on the cheek, and the Saiyan teleported away. In the temple of Kamisama. End was looking down from the edge of the platform. Issei appeared right behind him. End. Issei, hello. Issei. Hello Dend, it's nice to see you. Dend. What brings you here? Issei. Well, I would like to train a little. Mr.popo. The time room is ready. You can enter with complete confidence. Issei. Thank you very much Mr.popo. By the way, I would like you to let me know when it gets dark, since I have to return home. And No problem, Mr. Popo will come for you when the sun goes down. He trains with complete confidence. They say. Well, see you later. They say entered the time room to do intense training, creating an image of himself to have someone to fight with. Meanwhile in the underworld, in Gremory Castle. Rias and what remained of his clan were gathered, along with Serzichas. Serzichas. Good, Rias. Would you tell me what Haidu Issei happened? Rias did not respond. Becoming crestfallen and shedding some tears. Until Kiba spoke up. Kiba. I will tell you what happened Serzichas Sama. Serzichas. Go ahead Yudokun, I listen to you. Kiba. It all started after the student festival ended. Issei Kun, tired of hiding it, took courage to finally declare his love for the president. He saw how the president was with Razor, Issei Kun couldn't bear to see that, letting himself be carried away by his feelings, Razor, having become stronger, defeated him without any problem, upon hearing the roar and arriving at the occult club, I found Issei Kun seriously injured. I took him home myself and cured him. The others had been manipulated and seduced by the false people that Razor created, except for Akeno-san and Rasu sensei who just as I believed in Issei-kun, one day after all that, the president manipulated by Razor, summoned Issei-kun to kill him, Kaneko-chan and Zenobia attacked him, Razor extracted Issei's boosted gear, so that the president would then try to finish him off. After the attack by President Issei-kun was no longer there, so we all assumed that he had died. Regarding yesterday, we know the same, since everyone who was there saw Issei-kun for the first time again. Serzichas. So you don't know anything about the power demonstrated by Issei-kun, right? Kiba. No, but the moment I told him about the girl's news, he was filled with rage, emanating a strange aura, right behind him the silhouette of a giant monkey and a dragon formed. 
Serzich's. Thank you very much, Yudo kun I would like to congratulate you for defending your friend, Diba. You don't have to thank me, Serzich's sama. It's what a friend would do, plus he helped me a lot when I was in a bad time. Serzich's. As for you girls, I am very disappointed. How can it be possible that after everything Issei Kun did for you, you chose to betray him? I hope you can recognize the mistake you just made. Serzich's approached Ria's, looking very angry. Serzich's slapped him. Ria's. Ani Sama. Why did you do it? Serzich's. You still ask, you let that bastard manipulate you, you almost killed the only person who did everything for you, he even risked his own life to save you. And is this how you pay him? I very much doubt that after the reaction that Issei Kun had upon seeing them he will be able to forgive them, but they must try to get him to return to the clan, since if the guy that Kao Kao mentioned before Issei Kun eliminated him, reappears we will be in serious danger. And from what I saw yesterday, I think Issei Kun is the one to face him. Serzichas told Riaz and the others about the danger that Demigra presented to everything, because Serzichas tried to establish contact with the other demonic families and clans to see what could be done with this approaching danger. Returning to the sacred temple of Kamisama. Issei had spent training in the time room for 10 hours, which in the time room would be approximately 5 months. Issei was already with much longer hair, almost reaching his shoulders, his clothes very torn and very tired after having trained non-stop. Mr. Popo arrived to tell Issei that the sun had already set. They both left, but not before Issei took out of the bag that Master Karen gave him, a hermit seed, he ate it, and he recovered all his energy, he said goodbye to Dend and teleported to his house, when Roswis arrived, he saw him with long hair, due to the effect of time habitation. Roswis. Issei Kun, what does that long hair you have mean? Issei. You see Ross Chan, it's all because of the time room. Roswis. I'll cut that hair right now. You have classes tomorrow so you must be presentable. Issei. Okay, I guess. Even though Roswis looked at him differently and behaved differently with Issei, she did not lose her responsible and strict way of being. The Valkyrie began to cut his hair, while Issei told her how the training was, when he explained the situation of Demigra, Akeno and Sona, they approached so that everyone could find out what was happening. Finally, before dinner, Issei asked the three if they could do magic, that all the students would forget that he arrived as that blonde guy, that everyone would see him as he always was, brown, the three explained to him that even if they did that, the girls would still have a great attraction towards him, they said this in a slightly angry way, since all the girls at school would still be after him. After that everything was normal, with Issei eating as always, and sleeping together with Akeno, Sona, and Ross was naked in his bed, all hugging him tightly. The next day. The day started as usual, everyone woke up to go to school as usual, they arrived and everyone went to their classroom. The gazes of the girls at school did not leave Issei, already in class Zenovia, Asia, and Irina did not stop looking at him feeling guilty, wanting to apologize, while he was in class, Issei remembered with great affection the words of his grandmother Milk, but he did not have to leave his studies aside, since he never knew what turns life would take. So Issei responded in class today and was always attentive to the teacher's words. It was time for break and Issei went to the student council, he wanted to get some information from the school teachers, which would help him find 21 much easier, and it was also the perfect excuse to see Sona. Issei arrived at the student council room, but just before entering, someone was coming out, neither of them noticed, so they both collided. It was Tsubaki Shinra, the vice president of the student council, Issei with his Saiyan reflexes, managed to catch her before she fell to the ground. Issei. Tsubaki Senpai, are you okay? Tsubaki didn't respond, she just blushed staring at Issei. For the first time she could see Tsubaki with a different expression than the one she usually has. Finally Tsubaki reacted by answering Issei. Tsubaki. Yes, Issei-kun, I'm fine. While well, still blushing. Tsubaki got up, Issei asked her, Issei. Hey Tsubaki-senpai, is So-chan here? Tsubaki. Yes, Issei-kun, the president is in there. Issei. Thank you very much, Tsubaki-senpai. Tsubaki. Well I have to go. Issei, see you later Tsubaki-senpai. Tsubaki felt strange, she had never felt like this, maybe it was because of Issei's change. Returning to Issei, he entered the student council room, Sona was organizing some files, when she noticed Issei's presence. Issei. Hello, So-chan. I need your help. Sona. Hello Issei-kun, what do you need? Issei. Well, you see, Dan mentioned to me that in this school there was a person who would help me look for the Dragon Balls, so I could revive Drake. Den told me that she used to be a scientist, so imagine that you, having information about the teachers, could tell me which classroom she is in. Sona. Jum, let me see. Sona began to review the documents with information on teachers, until she found one where there was only that of a teacher from the school's scientific laboratory. Sona. Here she is, you're lucky, this is her free time, apparently she's the only scientist in the school, you can go right now. Issei. 
Thank you very much, So Chan, I don't know what I would do without you. Issei was about to turn around to leave. But Sona spoke to him to ask him for something. Sona. Hey, Issei Kun. I need you to help me with something. Issei. Yes, So Chan, how can I help? Issei didn't finish speaking or turning around when Sona approached hers and kissed him on the mouth. Issei responded to Sona's kiss by hugging her, it was a bit of a long kiss. They separated, making Sona have an expression that made her look very cute. Sona. When I saw Akeno san kiss you, I knew she couldn't stay behind. Issei didn't know what to say, so she just told him. Issei. And see you, So Chan. Sona. Goodbye. Issei Kun. Issei was very impressed by what just happened, he had never seen Sona behave like that. But now she had to find 21. He arrived where Sona had told him, the scientific laboratory of Kuo Academy, Issei entered and saw a young woman, very pretty, she wore glasses, she had very long and brown hair, she was wearing a tight dress, very tight black pants, some boots, and over the dress she had the typical white coat of a doctor or scientist. When she was free, she was playing video games on a portable console. Issei. Good morning. A21. Good morning, how can I help you? Sorry if I'm doing something a teacher shouldn't do, but it's my break time and I'm very bored. Wait. You're Issei, right? Issei. What? How do you know? A21. Well, all the girls talk about you, and I finally have the pleasure of meeting you. Issei. Well, apparently I became very famous ha 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 ha. A21. Well, tell me Issei Kun, what brought you here? It's rare that they visit me, you know. Issei. Well then, I need your help. A21. My help. Issei. You see, I am not a human being, I am a Saiyan who recently realized his origins, Kamasama told me that you used the Dragon Balls a while ago, I need your help to be able to find the Dragon Balls and bring a friend back, I don't know if you could help me. Number 21. Number 21 was surprised to know that a Saiyan knew a lot about her. But in a friendly tone he answered. A21 hum. A Saiyan, it's been a while since I've seen one. Wow a Saiyan, it seems you know a lot about me, I will help you with that, but with one condition. The bell rang and it was time to go back to class. A21. Too bad Issei Kun, you'll have to wait until the end of classes, well it was fun talking to you, I'll see you later. Issei. Well, okay, see you later. 21. Issei left the science laboratory, thinking about everything that had just happened, Sona's kiss, Demigra's threat, and what 21 would ask of him, in exchange for helping him search for the Dragon Balls to bring back his son. Friend, Drake. Chapter 9. Return of an old friend and the truth about A21. Issei, after leaving the science laboratory, began walking back to his room, with a thoughtful look in his hands in his pockets. He suddenly felt the kai of three people who were following him, immediately he knew who they were, changing his thoughtful look to a serious and cold one. Issei. Don't you know that following a person to spy on them is bad manners? The people who followed Issei were none other than Asia, Zenobia and Arena, they were surprised because Issei noticed his presence without needing to see them. Asia. Issei-san, can we talk? Issei. Why would I have to talk to you? Irina. We want to apologize to you. Zenovia. We want things to be fixed between us, we all miss you, even the president. Hearing this, Issei turned around and said annoyingly, Issei. I'll only say it once. There's nothing to fix, that Issei who used to care about you is dead, and you yourselves were in charge of murdering him, you don't care what I did for you, you changed me and forgot me easily, and tell Rias that I'm not interested in making peace with anyone, I simply don't care about anything that has to do with you. Asia. But we love you Issei-san. Issei. You are the least likely to say that, I risked my own life to save you, so they would have to pay me like this. This made Asia unable to hold back her tears. Issei. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a class to attend. Issei retreated directly to his classroom, to which they were shocked, this caused the trio from the church not to enter class, but instead went directly to the occult club to try to get Rias to console them. Classes went on normally, until dismissal time arrived. Upon leaving, Issei headed to the laboratory where A21 was. Luckily, he didn't have any other encounters with the Gremory that day, Issei arrived at the laboratory and saw 21 closing the laboratory. A21. Issei Kun, it's you. I see that you are curious to know what you have to do for me to help you. Issei. I'm very interested in bringing my friend back. A21. Well, then what you have to do for me to help you is. Go on a date with me. Issei. Wedi. A21. What? Is it bad? Issei. No, nothing like that, it's just that it's strange that you ask me that. A21. Well then let's go she said excitedly. They both left school and began walking to the center of the city. As they were walking Issei asked her. Issei. Question 21, why a date? A21. 
well, as I told you in the morning, I hardly have any friends, and I really liked you Issei-kun, and what better than the most desired boy in school to go out and have fun with, Issei. Well, then let's have some fun. Issei and 21 went to many stores, visited an aquarium and then went to eat something, Issei was so thoughtful that he almost didn't eat anything, strange for Issein, Issei noticed something peculiar about 21, despite his slender figure, and yes, I had a great body, I had an uncontrollable desire to eat sweets, chocolates, cakes. Issei. Do you almost always eat like this? A21. Well Issei-kun, look who's talking, do you think I don't know about the appetite of Issein? Although I'm surprised that you barely ate anything today, for a Saiyan that's very strange. A say. I just can't stop thinking about what will happen next, to tell the truth I'm worried about whether I'll be able to bring my friend back. A21. Don't worry, I'll help you. Hey, can I ask you something? Hearing those words, a say remembered Rainer, fearing that he would suffer the same thing that happened on his last date. A say. What? A21. Can you tell me about your past? I'm interested in knowing more about you. I promise that when you do I will tell you about myself. I say. Well, okay, a while ago I met a girl from my school, she asked me on a date and to be her boyfriend, on the day of the date everything was going very normal, until she revealed that she was actually a fallen angel, he killed me, but just before he died, the heiress of the Grimory clan appeared, saving my life by turning me into a demon, from that day on, everything was different in my life, I met my partner in battle, with whom together we became very strong, I was meeting girls that I defended with my life, loving them, no matter what until the day they decided to betray me, attacking me for no reason, and leaving me in oblivion, if it weren't for the supreme Kaiosama who saved me, I wouldn't have told her, I met my grandfather Goku and my grandmother Milk, I increased my powers as a Saiyan, and I accidentally murdered my partner, because the damn person who had taken him from me, used a type of energy that made him evil, that is why I went in search of your help. A21 wow Issei-kun, you are a box of surprises. Issei. Aren't you surprised that he's a demon? A21. Not really, I had read a lot about the supernatural, so it doesn't surprise me at all. Issei. That's good to hear. A21. Well, as I promised, I will tell you about my past. I was built by the Red Patrol, an evil organization that tried to dominate the world at any cost. Your grandfather Goku fought against it since he was a child. Issei. Do you know my grandfather? Issei asked strangely. A21. Yes, Goku and his friends who helped separate me from the evil side, making me recover as an android leaving my evil side behind, but being a genetically altered android I never aged, and I kept my android abilities, I worked at the Capsule Corporation a few months after it went bankrupt, so two years ago, I gathered the Dragon Spheres to be able to be a human and have a normal life. According to my biological age I am 24 years old, but in reality I have lived around 200 years. They say. Wedi. 200 years. A21. Don't say it out loud covering his mouth it would be embarrassing if they found out that I am two centuries old. So it will be our secret. I say. It's okay, no problem. A21. But there is something that I still don't understand. According to what has been said the most about you, I don't understand what is you so worried. I say. Two days ago there was a meeting between the supernatural factions, the enemies he defeated, mentioned that an ancient demon god had returned and wants to wreak chaos in the world. What has me very worried is that I don't know if I will have enough strength to defeat him. When Issei said this, A21 got up from his chair and stood behind Issei, hugging him, placing her breasts on Issei's head. A21. You don't have to feel that way, after all you are Issein, a very cute one. When A21 said this Issei understood that A21 was in love with her, she was very pretty, but Issei was curious to know her true abilities, because Issei felt that there was something in her, something very special. Issei. Thank you. I guess. A21. Now come, I need to show you something. They both got up, paid and left the cafeteria. They say. Where are we going? A21. Follow me. We will go to a more uninhabited place. 21 began to rise and fly at high speed, to which Issei began to follow her, after 10 minutes flying they reached a mountain, they both descended. A21. Well Issei-kun, we arrived, the reason we are here is because I would like to have a little friendly fight with me. Issei. What? Are you sure? A21. Yes, I would like to know how powerful you are, and I also want to show you my transformation. And I know you won't hurt me because you won't use your maximum power. Issei. How? Can you transform? 21 began to charge her Kai and raise her energy, emanating a pink aura. Letting you see his transformation. Her skin tone had changed to a pink color, her hair was now white, and her clothes had changed. He noticed that she also had a tail. A21. Okay, Issei-kun, let's begin. Issei. Okay. 
Issei transformed into Super Saiyan, and 21 began to attack him, Issei was only dodging her attacks, since he did not want to hurt her, until 21 landed a blow and Issei on impulse hit her back, causing her to be thrown to the ground. Dot. Issei. 21, are you okay? A21. Yes, don't worry about me, let's continue with our fight. 21 rose, starting to charge an attack with her hands, which Issei understood, and descended to the ground. Issei ka.mi.ha.mia. A21. Haya, Issei. Haya, both powers collided with each other, even though Issei was holding back, he felt the surprising power of 21's attack, but little by little 21's power began to weaken, 21 fainted, she returned to her normal form, retaining her transformation clothes, falling at high speed to the ground, Issei let the Kamehameha leave the planet and teleported to catch 21, he caught her, took their belongings and teleported to his house, leaving 21 in his bed, he gave him a seed from the hermit and he woke up. A21. Issei Kun. Where we are. Issei. Right after the fight, you became unconscious so I decided to bring you home. A21. That makes me happy. Do you live alone? Issei. No, let's go downstairs to introduce you to the girls. Issei introduced Akeno, Sona and Roswis to 21, at first they felt jealous, but then they began to talk friendly. Issei asked Sona to give him a leave of absence tomorrow, because she would go with 21 to look for the Dragon Balls to revive Drag. 21 didn't have to teach classes the next day, so there was no problem. Everyone ate dinner and got ready to sleep, even 21, who at first was embarrassed to know that the girls were undressing to sleep with Issei, but the feelings that she had developed for the Saiyan were much more than sleeping like that with him next to the girls. Other girls didn't care. After a while everyone fell asleep. The next day. Issei and 21 woke up very early to go out in search of the Dragon Balls, Issei took her backpack, and together with A21, they went in search of the Dragon Balls. Thanks to 21's dragon radar and Issei's precise teleportation, they found all the dragon balls before nightfall. They went to the same mountain where they had fought the day before. A21. Well Issei Kun, we already have them all. You just need to make your wish. Issei took out all the spheres from the backpack and placed them on the ground. A21 would be in charge of calling Shenlong, since Issei didn't know what she had to do. A21. Get out of there, Shenlong and grant me a wish. The spheres began to shine, and lightning spread towards the sky, the sky darkened, and a green dragon with red eyes emerged from the lightning. Shenlong. Tell me what your wish is. I can fulfill any wish. A21. Well, Issei Kun, tell him what your wish is. Issei. I want you to revive Drag, the Red Emperor Dragon, Celestial Dragon of Domination, so that the Sacred Gear can reappear and be my companion again. Shenlong. So Drag, huh? I had a lot to hear from him, I would gladly do anything to bring back an old friend. Sheng Long's eyes began to shine, suddenly a red aura came out of the spheres, entering Issei, a great roar could be felt throughout the land, the power of the Emperor Dragon was combined with that of Issei, to which Issei he had his boosted gear once again. It appeared in her hand. Issei. Drag. Are you there? Speaking to his boosted gear. Drag. It's good to see you again, mate, I notice how your power has increased a lot. Sheng Long. I'm glad to see you're okay, Drag. Drag. If it weren't for you, Shenlong would not have been able to come back to life, I owe you one. Give my regards to the other dragon gods. Shenlong. No problem, old friend, well I'm leaving. Shenlong disappeared into the spheres, they rose and spread once again throughout the world. The sky returned to normal, the sun was setting. A21. Good Issei I'm very glad your friend is back. Issei. I want to thank you 21, if it weren't for you, Drag wouldn't be back. Issei hugs her and 21 blushes. Issei. Well, I think it's time, let me take you home. A21 way to say Kun, I was thinking. That since I don't have many friends. He's thinking about living with you. Issei just smiled and said. Okay, then let's go home. In the sacred temple of Kamisama. And? Looks like Issei finally got it. Mr.popo. What is Kamisama talking about? And? Shenlong helped Issei recover his partner, it seems that the Saiyan Emperor Dragon has been born. He will continue. Preview of the next chapter. Hello, I'm Issei, hey grandpa, who are these people? That. The prince of the Saiyans. Am I going to become god? Oh really? The next chapter of Issei, the last Saiyan will be the legend is reborn, the super Saiyan god arises once again. Do not miss it. Chapter 10. The legend is reborn, the super Saiyan god emerges once again. Issei after having revived Drake, with the help of the Dragon Balls, returned home with 21, with the help of teleportation, Issei very excitedly showed Sona, Akeno and Roswis, that his friend Drake had turned. 
Everything went on as usual, until bedtime, the girl slept with Issei, to be able to settle into the Saiyan's body, however, Issei was eager to visit his grandfather the next day, and meet the people his grandpa would introduce him, so he went out to the terrace of the Hayadu residence mansion, leaving the girls in bed. Watching the starry sky, thoughtful. Drag. What's got you so worried, mate? Issei. I don't know Drag, it's not concern, rather, it's curiosity to see who will be the people that Grandpa Goku will introduce me to. Drag. Oh, I see. You're excited. Issei. I guess, every time I hear about that demigra guy, a feeling of excitement arises in me, wanting to fight him and find out how strong he is. Even though it could be the end of us. Drag. Haha, ha, that's something new for you, partner, but I like that you have that desire to fight. Issei. Hey Drag, is there a way I can combine your dragon powers with my Saiyan powers? Drag. Although Saiyan powers are still unknown to me, I think it would be possible, but don't worry, buddy, you will surely find a way. Issei. Well, let's hope you're right, friend. Drag. Well. I'll go rest, see you mate. Issei, see you tomorrow Drag. Issei stared at the sky, still thoughtful, until someone interrupted him from his thoughts. Roswis. It's strange that you are here alone Issei-kun. Issei. Ross-chan. Roswis approached Issei, standing next to him, with her gaze forward, seeing the dark starry sky. Roswis. It seems strange to me, feeling the bed so empty, so I decided to accompany you he said smiling. And tell me, why have you been so thoughtful lately? Issei. It's nothing Ross-chan, it's just that I'm curious to know how strong this demigra guy is, and to be able to fight him, but I'm also worried that I won't be able to defeat him, and above all I'm worried that something bad could happen to them. Pass on to you, I don't want to disappoint my grandfather either. Roswis. Don't worry Issei-kun, I trusted you. I know that you will manage to find a way to defeat the demigra guy, besides, we can defend ourselves, but I know that if something bad happens, you will be there to save us and protect us once, but, just as you have always done. Issei. Ross-chan. They both stared at each other, Roswis's words had reached Issei's heart, making him have one more motivation to move forward, something to protect. Roswis launched herself at Issei, joining his lips with the Saiyans. Roswis. I hope that helped. She said blushing. Issei was surprised, since she knew Roswis she had never behaved like this. She was really showing her feelings for him. Right after Roswis's kiss, they both noticed that they were no longer alone. The Keno. Ara Ara, it seems that Roswis and Sei finally found a boy to be interested in. Sona. It seems I can't neglect you for a second Issei Kun. A21. Issei Kun. I helped you. I think I deserve one too. Roswis only blushed and looked a little embarrassed, Issei only smiled at such a situation, so everyone entered the house again, going back to sleep altogether. The next day. Finally, the day of seeing Grandpa Goku again and meeting those people that his grandfather had told him about, Issei woke up very excited, but before going to the Supreme Planet to see his grandfather, he had to go through a boring day of school, even though he had already caught up with all the notes and classes he had not received, he still had to take the exams. Everything happened normally, until it was time for recess, the bell to go out for recess rang, Issei left very quickly, catching the eyes of all the girls in the school, and making them let out one or another sigh, trying to avoid some kind of after an annoying meeting with the grimery, he went out to the patio and went to a tree to sit under its shade and try to meditate a little. He suddenly felt a demonic eye, but one that Issei recognized with some appreciation. The subject approached him, greeting him. Kiba. Hello Issei-kun. Can I sit down? Issei. Kiba. Friend, how are you? Kiba. Very well, Issei-kun, I am very glad to see you and that you are well. Issei. I tell you the same Kiba, if it weren't for you saving me that time, I wouldn't be alive. Kiba. Don't worry, I know you would have done the same for me. Issei. Hey Kiba, I want to show you something. Taking out his boosted gear without anyone seeing it, Kiba. Wedi. Drag. But how? Issei. Thanks to the Dragon Balls, Kiba. The Dragon Balls. Issei. They are magical spheres that when you gather them, a dragon appears and fulfills a wish, fortunately the dragon of the spheres was an old friend of Drag. Kiba. I see, you have changed a lot Issei-kun. Issei. Yes, in fact all that was new to me. Kiba. And regarding the power you showed at the faction meeting. Issei. You see Kiba, it's complicated. Issei told Kiba everything, about his origins, his power and his ancestors. Kiba. I see. Then you happen to be a Saiyan. Issei. Yes, thanks to that I was able to become stronger, I don't know why I couldn't realize it before. Kiba. Hey, and with that demigra guy, what do you think about that? Issei. Well, I'm very anxious to know how great his power is, but at the same time I don't know if I can defeat him. Kiba. You don't have to worry, you will find a way to beat him, you always do. Plus we will all be supporting you. Issei. Thank you Kiba. I don't know what I would do without a friend like you. Kiba. 
By the way, Issei-kun. There is something I want to ask you. Issei. Tell me Kiba. Kiba. I would like to fight at your side to face Demigra. Issei. With pleasure, friend. I will feel much calmer if I fight with you while watching my back. Kiba. Thank you very much, Issei-kun. I know I won't be able to keep up with you. But I would like to use the same training methods that you do. Issei. Okay Kiba, I let you know when I'm going to train. Hey Kiba, when you see Gasper, tell him if he also wants to train with us. Just at that moment the bell rang to return to class, Issei returned to his classroom, from then on everything happened normally until the end of classes. Issei told Roswis, Sona, Akeno and 21 that he was going to the Supreme Planet and that he would be back at night. He said goodbye hugging each of them. When they were gone he heard a voice in his head. Issei. Boy, do you hear me? Issei. Huh? Who are you? I am the Kaisama of the North of the Galaxy, I am just letting you know that your grandfather and the others are already with the Supreme Kaisama. Issei. Oh, thank you very much for the warning Kaisama. Kaisama. Well boy, see you later. Issei teleported to his house, he quickly changed his uniform into his sports clothes. And he teleported to the Supreme Planet. Where he saw Kibito, Shin, the former Supreme Kaisama, his grandfather Goku and four more people. Goku, hello Issei. Issei. Grandpa I'm very pleased to see you. Goku. Me too, Issei. Issei proceeded to greet Kibito and Shin, before going with the people that his grandfather had brought. Shin. Hello young Issei, I am very happy to know that you are well. Kibito. Hello Issei, I am very pleased to see you, it seems that you have become much stronger. Issei. Hello Shin, hello Kibito, it's great to see you. Shin. You better hurry up young Issei, the special training with his grandfather is about to begin, and you have to meet his ancestors. Issei. I know, but there is something I would like to ask you. Kibito. What is Issei? Issei. I would like them to make me a suit similar to my grandfather's, it would have sentimental value, and at the same time I would feel much better fighting with a suit similar to his. Kibito. With pleasure, any details that you would like me to have. Issei. Well, I would like it to be black, with long sleeves, and have some red details and a red dragon logo, too please he said this in honor of Drake. Kibito. With pleasure Issei, it will be a pleasure to help you. Kibito used his magic to give him the suit that Issei asked for, instantly Issei already had his new suit. To give you an idea, Issei's suit would be similar to Black Goku's, below is an edit made by me, so you can imagine what it would look like with his new suit. Issei. Thank you very much, Kibito, well I'll go with my grandfather. After that he left with his grandfather with the strangers. Goku. Well Issei, as I promised, these are the people I want to introduce you to. These two here are my sons Gohin and Goten. Goten, Gohin, Issei. Nice to meet you Grandpa Gohan. Nice to meet you Grandpa Goten. Goten. Issei, nice to meet you, how are you doing with the girls, huh? Gohan, nice to meet you Issei. Dad told us that you are very strong. Issei. Please, Grandpa Goku is exaggerating. Goku. Not at all Issei, at your age none of us had your strength. It took us years of training to be at the level you are now. Well, let's continue with the two that are missing. Issei. Okay Grandpa. Goku. This here is Vegeta, the prince of the Saiyans, he is very grumpy. Vegeta, Vegeta. What did you say, vermin? Goku. You see, Issei, I told you. Issei, nice to meet you Prince Vegeta. Vegeta. Drop the formalities Brad, just call me Vegeta. I see that Kakarot's airhead has trained you very well, although you still have a long way to go to reach your maximum power, don't waste your full potential, insect. Remember that you are the last of the most powerful warrior race in the universe. Issei, yes lord, Goku. Finally, this is Trunks, he is Vegeta's son, although his father is not so grumpy. Vegeta. You mention that again, Kakarot and I will give you a beating that you will remember for all eternity. Goku. Calm down Vegeta, we are here to help Issei, remember that the earth is in danger. Trunks. Hello Issei, how nice to see you, just by feeling your Kai, I can tell you are very strong. Issei. The pleasure is mine Trunks, nice to meet you. Trunks. Vegeta. Well Kakarot, but you know that I do it for the earth and the boy. Issei. Thank you very much Mr. Vegeta. Vegeta. But don't you dare disappoint me, you vermin. Issei. Yes, sir, I will do my best. Goku. Well Issei, it's time to start. Issei. Yes Grandpa, by the way, what will we train today, Grandpa? Goku. Well Issei, you see, the Supreme Kaisama told me about that Demigra guy, and since that guy is a god, then you will become one too. Issei. What? A god. Goku. You see, to make it much easier for you, you will transform into Super Saiyan God, and for that you have to do a ritual. Issei. What kind of ritual? Goku. The ritual says that the light of five Saiyans will illuminate a soul, and you will be that soul, which will be illuminated. Issei. Well, let's get started, I can't wait to get stronger. Goku. 
Wow Issei, it seems that little by little you are becoming a lot more like me. Well, let's start at once, Milk will be angry if I'm gone for a long time again, which I don't understand if we're all already dead. All the Saiyajins formed a circle, all becoming Super Saiyans, Goten, Trunks, Gohan, Vegeta, Goku and Issei held hands, transferring their energy to Issei. He began to emanate blue flashes, and a great blow was present, a blue aura surrounded Issei, causing him to rise to the sky. When his aura dissipated, a great energy was felt throughout the place, Issei could be seen with his red hair resembling pink, a powerful aura the color of fire surrounded him. A great energy was felt in him, energy of a god, Issei had finally transformed into Super Saiyan God. Issei with his new Super Saiyan God suit. Oku. Excellent Issei, you finally became a god, a Super Saiyan God. How do you feel? Issei. Well, I can feel how the energy inside me is completely different from that of an ordinary Super Saiyan. Did I really become a god? Goku. We will only know that when we start fighting. Vegeta. It will be a 3 vs 3 battle, Trunks, Issei and I, against Kakarot, Gohan and Goten. We will start in the air, and the first to touch the ground will be eliminated, the Supreme Kaiosama will be the referee, well let's start. Shin. Let's fight. Vegeta launched himself against Goku, both transformed into Super Saiyan Blue, Trunks against Gohan and Goten against Issei, they exchanged blows very quickly, the fights were very even, but Trunks was eliminated by Gohan and Goten, due to Issei's superiority in Super Saiyan God, he didn't have much trouble against Goten. After all this, only Goku and Gohan remained against Vegeta and Issei. Vegeta. Well, Issei, it's time we put an end to these vermin. Do what I do. Issei. Okay. Vegeta began to join his hands horizontally, towards the front. Vegeta. This is the final radiance technique, worthy of a Saiyan. Gohan and Goku. Ka.mi.ha.mi. Vegeta and Issei. Glowing. Gohan and Goku. Hey Aya. Vegeta and Issei. Fine Isle. When both powers collided, the supreme planet shook, a great tremor shook the planet. Vegeta. Come on Issei show your Saiyan pride. Issei. Hey Aya. The final glow completely consumed the Kamehameha, giving Issei, Vegeta and Trunks the winners. Goku. Wow Issei, that was a great fight. Issei. And tell it, Grandpa. I had never had a fight like that. Shin. To continue with the training, you must eat a little, come on, the food is ready. Goku. For being dead, I'm already hungry. Ha ha ha. After the battle everyone prepared to eat and then continue with Issei's training. Meanwhile on a distant planet. Beerus. Hey Wiss, did you feel that energy? Wiss. Sure, Mr. Beerus, it looks like it's that of a Super Saiyan God. Beerus. Do you think Goku is back? Whis. That can't be possible Mr. Beerus, remember that Goku and his friends died a long time ago. But the energy I feel is very similar, it's probably someone close to him. Beerus. This is interesting. Whis. Do you want to go take a look sir? Beerus. No, I have a feeling he'll end up coming to us. Meanwhile in the underworld, Toa. Mr. Demigra, I want to inform you that Bali is now fully recovered. Demigra. Excellent. Then proceed to attack tomorrow, it is time for the entire world to kneel before the great Demigra. Chapter 11. Chaos in the Underworld, Demigra's Servants Attack. After an intense battle, the Saiyans, Shin and Kibito, were talking and eating. Goku told him anecdotes about the battles he had had. Until Vegeta interrupted them saying. Vegeta. Hey Kakarot, have you already told the boy about the full moon? Issei. Hey Grandpa, what is Mr. Vegeta talking about? Vegeta. I knew it, cork-headed Kakarot. How could you forget something so important? Goku. I'm sorry, I'm just very forgetful sometimes. Putting her hand behind his head. Issei. I don't understand anything you're talking about. Goku. You see Issei, the Saiyans before the legend of the Super Saiyan became a reality, had the peculiarity that when they saw the full moon, they transformed into giant apes, this caused them to multiply their power by 10, causing them to lose control, and they will destroy everything in their path. Vegeta. But as long as you don't have a tail, there won't be any problem. But eventually one will appear, especially if you use the time room to train, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the moon, if you or some enemy throws a kaiball into the sky, and there will be no turning back. Issei. And can we go back to normal? Goku. Yes, everything is that you yourself regain your consciousness, but you will not have the consequences that the first Saiyans had. Issei. So, what will happen if I transform into a Zeru? Goku. Having awakened your Super Saiyan power, when you transform into an Azeru, your fur will change to a golden color, this will make you lose control and raise your power exponentially, when this happens you will lose your mind, and you will forget who you are, you will I suggested that when this happens, you have a loved one to help you remember, when you recover your memories you will achieve the Super Saiyan 4 transformation. Issei. Super Saiyan 4. Goku. 
it is a more powerful transformation than Super Saiyan 3, but not as powerful as Super Saiyan God, even though you have already done the Super Saiyan God ritual and absorbed its power, it will still be difficult for you to control the Divine Kai, that is why you must take into account the transformation of Super Saiyan 4 during the battle, while you do not yet control the power of the gods. They say. And how will I control the power of the gods, Grandfather? Boku? Well, in a few days the Supreme Kai-sama will take you to the person who will help you achieve the power of the gods. They say. That means. That I won't be able to train with you anymore, Grandpa. Boku? Well, I have nothing left to teach you, so for now it will be a long time before we see each other again. Issei, upon hearing these words from his grandfather, felt very sad, since if it had not been for him not being alive, he would still be weak, in such a short time he had become too fond of his grandfather. He. Seeing this, Goku noticed that Issei was sad. Goku. Why that face? Come on Issei, the last Saiyan can't be like this, plus we still have a couple more tricks to teach you. Everyone finished eating and prepared to teach Issei the latest tricks, Vegeta taught him the Gallic Ho, the Big Bang attack, and finished helping him perfect the final shine, Gohan taught him the Masenko, Goten and Trunks showed him the technique of the fusion, Goku showed him the Jinkadama, finally there was only one thing that Goku wanted to show him. Goku. Well Issei, everyone is done with the training they had planned for you, even me, now there is only one more thing I want to show you, and that is Super Saiyan 4, it is so you can get an idea of the powers you will obtain. Issei. It's okay, grandfather. Boku. Well, pay close attention. Boku began to increase his kai, he was yellow, his hair began to grow, but it was not colored, and reddish fur began to cover his torso and arms, he had a tail, and his eyes were surrounded by a kind of dark circles, and his pupils were yellow. Boku. Well Issei, this is Super Saiyan 4. Issei. Wow Super Saiyan 4's appearance intimidates anyone. Boku. And it's not just his appearance that's intimidating, but also his power, well, transform into Super Saiyan God, so you can see what I was talking about a moment ago. Issei. Okay grandpa. Issei. Hi I I I. Issei transformed into Super Saiyan God. Issei. What now, grandfather? Goku. Well you will fight with me, we don't know when the next time we will fight will be, so try to give all your effort. Issei and Goku began to hit each other at high speed, making the entire supreme planet tremble. Goku hit Issei in the stomach. Issei responded with a kick, making him reach the ground. The Super Saiyan 4 was being surpassed by the Super Saiyan God, just as Goku had said, Goku launched himself once again against Issei, but Issei with great speed, dodged each of his attacks, Issei punched Goku making him fly against a mountain, Goku once again rejoined the battle charging a Kamehameha, Issei tried to counteract it with the final glow. Goku. Ka.me.ha.me. Issei. Glowing dot. Just as he was about to launch the technique that Vegeta taught him, Issei returned to his base state, very tired, panting, his divine Kai faded. Making him fall to the ground, Shin approached to heal him, but even though he had regained his energy, he felt very tired. Oku. See Issei, I told you. That's why it would be better for you to master the Super Saiyan 4 transformation first, before using the Super Saiyan God. Your body is not yet completely accustomed to divine energy, but as long as you continue training there will be no problem. Gohan. Hey dad, it's time to go back, mom will be angry if we're gone for too long. Goku. You're right, Gohan. Well Issei remember what I told you. Now say goodbye to the others, you don't know when you will see them again. Issei approached each one to say goodbye. Goten. I loved meeting you, Issei, don't forget your training, and don't leave the girls aside either. Issei. Yes, Grandpa Goten, I will. Gohan. It was a pleasure to meet you, Issei, remember that although training is important, you should not leave aside your studies, remember that my mother is capable of returning to life again to see you study. Issei. Don't worry Grandpa Gohan, I promise I won't disappoint you with my studies. Trunks. It was a pleasure to fight with you, Issei, I hope that having trained with me has been helpful. Issei. Thank you very much for helping me, Trunks. You helped me a lot, and I will always be grateful to you. Issei approaches Vegeta. Issei. Many thanks. Vegeta interrupts him saying. Don't thank me, bug. Just promise me that you will never be defeated, and that as the last Saiyan you will become the strongest in the entire universe, always show your Saiyan pride, otherwise, I will revive myself to beat you up. Issei. I promise you, Mr. Vegeta. I will not disappoint you. Oku. Well Issei, it was nice to see you again. Issei. Hey, Grandpa. I would like to ask you something. Oku. Tell me Issei. Issei. As you know, I managed to revive Drake, and I would like you to help me find some movement or technique where I can use my Saiyan and Dragon techniques at the same time. Goku. Now that you mention it, if there's one move you can use, it's the Dragon Fist. Issei. The Dragon's Fist. Goku. 
what you have to do is concentrate your energy in your fist and then attack the enemy with that accumulated energy. Since you have drag, your dragon fist will become much stronger and will have a better impact on your enemies. I say. With that dragon's fist, did you hear that drag? Drag? Yes mate, it sounds interesting, we should try it. Just at that moment, a very old short woman on a sphere appeared floating in the air. Doku, it's time to return to the other world. Doku? Yes, you're an idrool for a moment. Issei gave his grandfather a big hug, very sad because he knew it would be a long time to see him again. Doku? Come on, don't act like that, the last Saiyan, he shouldn't be sad. You have become very strong, I know that the planet where I was raised and born will be in good hands, for protecting our home. Issei? I won't let you down, Grandpa. I promise you that the next time we meet again, I will be stronger, and I will surpass you and Mr. Vegeta. Goku? Well Issei, see you soon. Issei? See you Grandpa, Goku. Thanks for everything. Goku and the others left with Uranai Baba towards the other world. Issei? Well Shin, I have to return to Earth, the girls must be very worried. Shin? Okay, young Issei, I'll go to Earth for you, to go with that teacher that his grandfather told you about. Issei? Okay, as long as I continue training on my own. Thank you very much for the Kibito suit. Kibito, you're welcome Issei. Take care of yourself. Issei placed his fingers on his forehead, teleporting himself to the ground. Issei appeared in his room, went down the stairs and arrived at the room where the girls were. When they saw Issei with the suit that Kibito had made for him, they blushed, since those clothes made him look more handsome. Fortunately, I arrived just in time for dinner time. Very excited, he told everyone about what he had learned and the people he met. Akeno. Rr, Issei Kun. Looks like you had a good day. Issei. Yes, Akeno san. Although there is something I wanted to tell you, Sona. What is Issei Kun? Issei. Well, it turns out that Saiyans have the peculiarity of becoming Azeru. Braswis. Azeru. Issei. It is a kind of giant monkey, which makes the user multiply their power x10 in exchange for losing their minds. This happens when there is a full moon. A21. According to the Red Patrol files, the Saiyans used this transformation to conquer planets, they devastated everything in their path no matter what, but after all that they returned to normal. Braswis. So, Issei Kun will become a monster. Issei. Yes, but it will only be momentarily, my grandfather explained to me that having awakened the Super Saiyan transformation, if I become an Azeru, my fur will change color, combining the power of an Azeru with that of a Super Saiyan, in that case moment you will have to act. Sona. Huh. Us. Issei. The only thing you have to do is try to make me remember who I really am, once I have regained my reason and consciousness, I will awaken the Super Saiyan 4 transformation, giving me great power. The Keno. But isn't the Super Saiyan God supposed to be stronger? Issei. Apparently my body is not ready to withstand such an amount of divine energy. My grandfather told me that he should first master phase 4 before reaching the God phase. Sona. And how will you do that? Issei. The Supreme Kai-sama will come for me to take me to someone who will help me use Divine Kai, so there is nothing to worry about. But I just want to sleep, having used Super Saiyan God left me very exhausted. Everyone got up and went to sleep as usual. The next day. Everything happened as usual, until lunchtime arrived at school, Issei went to look for Kiba, since since he had already had lunch, and there was still a lot of time to go back to class, he thought about going to train a little at school. Room of time, and since Kiba told him that he wanted to train with him, he thought about going to look for him. Issei. Hey Kiba, are you busy? Kiba. No, Issei Kun, why? At that point they were interrupted by the screams of the girls, they couldn't believe that the most handsome boys in the school were together, causing them once again to have not so healthy thoughts with both of them as protagonists. Kiba. It would be better to go somewhere else, don't you think? When Issei was about to answer him, Riaz appeared, taking Issei by the arm. Riaz. Issei. Can we talk? Issei moved his arm abruptly, freeing his hand from Ria's grip. Issei. You're right, Kiba. Better to go somewhere else. Issei began to walk, to which Kiba only said. I'm sorry, President. Kiba caught up with Issei, leaving Ria staring into space on the verge of crying. Kiba and Issei were heading out of the school to go to the Kamasama temple. As they walked out of the school, Kiba told him how the girls from the club always asked him if he knew anything about him, to which Issei acted with indifference. Issei explained to Kiba where they were going and how the time room worked. They left the school and they reached the sacred temple thanks to Issei's teleportation. They arrived and Issei prepared to introduce Kiba, Dend and Mr. Popo once he explained everything to Kiba. They both entered the time room with the condition that Mr. Popo would pick them up in an hour so as not to be late for class. Meanwhile in the underworld. Everything was very quiet in the underworld, until out of nowhere, roars and explosions began to be heard, a legion of monsters commanded by Mira and Toa, a few of Demigra's servants, and Demigra himself, in addition to the cow's brigade. 
Bremery Castle, Demon Soldier. Serzich's Sama, a legion of monsters has been sighted on the outskirts of the demonic city, they claim to be commanded by Demigra, and the cow's brigade is there. Serzich's? Damn. I didn't know it would arrive so soon. Quick call all the families and the clans. We all have to be united in this battle. Also warn Michael and Azazel, we can't let those bastards defeat us. From one moment to the next all the faction leaders were present, the underworld called the Gremory, Bale, and Citri clan. Even the Norse gods were there. The factions approached Demigra's monster legion. And without saying a word the battle began. Meanwhile in the time room. Issei and Kiba were training, Issei taught Kiba Kai and how to launch bursts of energy from his sword. Issei realized that his tail had appeared since Kiba told him that something strange had happened to him, to which Issei proceeded to explain what was happening with the full moon and everything that he had to do with the Azera transformation. Of the Saiyans. While Issei was dodging Kiba's sword attacks, Mr. Popo arrived to look for them and tell them that an hour had passed and they had to go back to school. When they left, Issei ate a seed from the hermit and gave Kiba one too, so he could get his back. Energies. They said goodbye to Dand and Mr. Popo and teleported back to the school. When they arrived at school, they talked about how training had been. Kiba. I didn't know a place like that existed, Issei Kun. Issei. Nor me, my grandfather Goku was the one who told me about all that. Kiba. I would like to train with you again, Issei Kun. Issei. Yes, no problem, Kiba. I will look for you to go train once again. Just then they were intercepted by Grafia Serzich's wife. Grafia. Yudo Kun, Issei Kun. I need you to come with me. Kiba. What's wrong, Grafia? Grafia. This is an emergency, the demon god Demigra is attacking the underworld with a legion of very powerful monsters, and the cow's brigade has joined the attack. We need his help, especially yours Issei Kun. Issei. What Demigra? It can't be, where are So-chan, Ross-chan and Akeno-san? Grafia. Miss Citri, Miss Roswis and Miss Akeno are in the battle, even Miss 21 joined the battle. Issei. Damn we have to get there as soon as possible, but I can't fight in these clothes. Issei teleported and in less than one second he was back with the clothes that Kibito had made for him. After Issei changed his outfit, they teleported in a magic circle towards the battle site. In the underworld. All the clans are fighting against Demigra's army. Sona, Akeno, Roswis and 21 were being cornered, when suddenly. Issei. Ka.me.ha.me.haya. Issei with a Kamehameha pulverized a large part of Demigra's army. Roswis, Sona, Akeno and 21. Issei Kun. Issei. Sorry for taking so long girls. Issei teleported to Serzich's side. Issei. What is the situation Serzich's Sama? Serzich's? Well Issei Kun, apparently these bastards decided to join up with Demigra. Issei. Well, you take care of Vali and the others, I'll take care of sending that damn Demigra to the grave. Issei extended one of her hands saying. The attack. Big biome. A large ball of energy came out of Issei's hand, leaving a large crater and eliminating many Demigra soldiers. Mira and Towa noticed that Issei had arrived. Towa. Your Majesty Demigra, the Saiyan is here. Demigra. Excellent. Towa, why don't you check how strong that ape is? Towa. At your command. Towa proceeded to raise his scepter, creating a portal, bringing in a huge monster unknown to everyone. The monster came out of the portal, roaring, but it seemed to be in an incomplete form. Issei without thinking twice transformed into Super Saiyan and charged a Kamehameha. Issei. Ka.mi.haya.mi.haya. The Kamehameha hit the monster squarely, creating a huge smoke. Everyone thought that the monster had been defeated, but when the smoke cleared, the monster had taken what seemed to be its original form. Issei launched himself against the monster, but it disappeared and appeared behind him, hitting it, making it crash to the ground. Issei, angry, launched himself once again against the monster, having the same result, the monster began to charge a large ball of energy, Issei began to charge a Kamehameha to counter it, when suddenly some kind of machine appeared in the sky. From which two mysterious young men emerged, one of whom looked familiar to Issei, the machine became more compact, and one of the young men kept them in a kind of capsule. One of the young men appeared in front of Issei, and together they managed to disappear the energy ball created by the monster. The other young man who appeared from the machine took out an instrument and started playing a song that made the monster go crazy. That's Tapian, keep it that way. Hey referring to Issei, we must find a way to defeat him, the song Tapian is playing won't hold him back for long. Does anything occur to you? Issei. Well, physical or Kai attacks don't work, the best thing would be to paralyze him and attack him with something that destroys him once and for all. I know. I have an idea. Issei teleported where he was to the Gremory clan. Issei. Hey Gasper. Gasper. Issei Senpai. Issei. I need your help, it's to defeat the monster over there. Gasper. But I don't know if I can do it. Issei. Don't worry Gasper, I trust you, I know you can do it. Gasper. 
Okay, Issei Senpai. I will do my best. Issei. That's the attitude, good now come with me. Asper put his hand on Issei's shoulder, thus teleporting to the purple-haired guy's side. Well, do you already have a plan? Issei. Gasper will paralyze the monster, at that moment we will have an opportunity to attack it. Sounds like a good idea, well then let's go. At that moment Tapian stopped playing the song, causing the monster to attack again. Tapian. I'm sorry Trunks, I can't calm you down more by playing the song with my ocarina. Issei. Trunks. Trunks. If you have questions, I'll answer them later, now you have to focus on defeating that monster. Issei. Will Gasper paralyze the monster? Gasper. Okay, Issei Senpai. Gasper managed to paralyze the monster, Issei transformed into Super Saiyan 3. Trunks, seeing this, also did the same. Trunks. Well, it's our chance. Come on. Trunks attacked him with a gigantic blast of Kai. Issei. Well Drag, are you ready? Drag. When you say mate. Issei began to concentrate his energy into his fist, thus taking out the boosted gear from him. To everyone's impression that Drag had come back to life. Issei. Well here we go. Issei launched himself against the monster, Drag's aura began to manifest around him, little by little he took on physical form, a form in which no one had ever seen the Red Emperor Dragon, Drag completely pierced the monster, to then surround it, creating a large explosion, which made the monster disappear. Everyone was very impressed, since no one had made Drag manifest physically, just when Mira and Towa were preparing to fight Issei, Trunks and Tapian. A demon, a servant of Demigra, appeared from a portal. That he said something to Towa and Mira, to which Towa just nodded. Towa. Well Saiyan, it seems that our fight will be postponed, but don't worry, Deimos will take care of you, and since they destroyed a monster that cost me a lot of work to bring from the underworld, I will leave them with another monster, and you are your Saiyan. Towa carried a ball of energy with his hand, threw it into the sky, thus creating an artificial moon. Trunks. Oh no that means you will turn. Issei. Don't worry, everything is under control, I know what I have to do. Towa. Well, then we'll see each other another time. Emigra, Mira and Towa disappeared into the portal. Leaving only Deimos, the cow's brigade and some soldiers from Demigra's legion. Deimos. Well it seems that apart from fighting me, they will also have to fight him. The portal opened from the ground, and a monster appeared that emanated a gigantic negative energy, even though it was much smaller in size than the one Issei and Trunks had defeated a moment ago. It had a purple and red color. Apart from having a sword. Deimos. Meet Janemba, a monster that is made of evil souls that were destined to go to hell. Apart from that, the Saiyan will also become a monster. The Saiyan only saw Deimos with a smile, then looked at Akeno, Sona, Roswis, and 21, they understood what Issei's plan was. To finish he saw directly the artificial moon created by Toa. Trunks and Tapian prepared to fight Super Janemba while Issei, upon seeing the artificial moon, began to lose control, gradually transforming into an Azeru. Everyone was perplexed by the changes that Issei was having, they wondered if that same giant ape was still the brown one. Issei in the form of Azeru became enraged, raising his power even more, causing him to become a golden Azeru while roaring. When they saw this, Sona, Akeno, 21 and Roswis remembered what he had told them the day before, and approached him. Sona. Issei-kun. It's us. Akeno. You have to react Issei-kun. Roswis. Issei-kun come back to normal please. A21. Issei-kun, you must remember who you are. Issei subconscious. Greg. Partner. Buddy. Can you hear me? Issei. Drag. Drag. Partner. You have become a monster. You must return to normal. Issei. But how am I supposed to do that? Drag. Listen to them. Listen to the voices of the people you love. Back to normal. At that moment Issei recognized the girls' voices, making Issei remember everything, decreasing his size. When he returned to normal they saw how Issei had changed radically. His brown hair had grown a lot. He had red circles in his eyes. They had reddish fur that covered their chest, back and arms. Their eyes were yellow. And they had a tail. All the girls who were in the battle saw how Issei had changed, he seemed like an adult, someone intimidating and serious. This caused them to blush and some even bleed from their nose. Issei. Sorry for the concerned girls, but now I have to help Trunks and Tapian. Amos couldn't believe what was happening, he didn't believe Issei knew how to counter Azera's way of him. Issei. Hey, Demigra servant, I think your plan will be of no use, well, it's time to end this. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.